Hi everyone and welcome to Udu Live. My name is Shadali and I'll be your host for the webinar today. Today I, we are actually with Anna. Hello everybody. Hey Anna, so what are we going to be discussing today? What's the webinar about? Okay, so basically today I'll try to present you how to manage your inventory within Udu. Okay. And I'd like to do it on an example of a tea and coffee distribution company. Ooh, nice. So I took a product which could be familiar, you'll be familiar to everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will distribute, so we will buy, sell our coffee and tea, but we, with the focus on inventory and how to manage our stock in Odoo. Okay, so the main app cover will be inventory. Exactly. Um, so if you guys have any questions during Anna's presentation about the inventory app, feel free to ask them in the live chat, which is just on the side. Um, you can also, you know, if you email, you can also email Anna if, if you yes, have any specific exactly. questions, because I'll be quite limited by the time here. So if you need anything specific to your business needs, you can email her at uh, bea at Odoo.com. Exactly. I've read the email address also mm -hmm. in the chat. Okay, uh, that's all I have to say. Over to you, Anna. Okay, so again, hello everybody. My name is Anna and I'm business advisor at Odoo. And uh, today, the topic of today is how to manage your stock from A to Z, okay, with Odoo. First of all, I slightly present the, our company. Uh, well, what our logo, what we say, for each needs there is an app. And uh, Odoo is an integrated system. So basically, uh, whatever business you have, come to us, see our solution because you easily can manage it within Odoo. Okay, as you can see here, you can boost your sales, uh, you can integrate your services, streamline your operations, and do other business uh, processes with our apps. Okay. Furthermore, uh, if we look at traditional ERPs, uh, most of them are accounting centric. So it comes all about accounting and then other needs uh, around. While if we look at Odoo, uh, our main goal, our main scope is customer. So everything is around customer, as you can see on the slide here. Uh, it's a Belgian company. Odoo is a Belgian company with our headquarters in Grand Rosier. We have also our office of marketing and sales in Brussels. Furthermore, as you can see on the map, we have offices around the world uh, in the United States, uh, Luxembourg, China, India, and we recently bought a new office in Dubai. The company was founded in 2005. Today, uh, if you look, uh, we are more than uh, 4 million users all over the world. And uh, as well as you can see, uh, we are quite uh, growing fast uh, with the revenue, with employees, and our partners also uh, increase uh, every, let's say, every every day or every month. Okay. Uh, here you can have you can have a look at already um, at some customers that already use Odoo, okay, to cover the whole uh, their business uh, process or to cover some of their business needs. And here uh, I'll briefly tell you about the agenda of what we'll cover today. So we'll have a look at uh, a good look at receipts as well as delivery orders, okay, in the inventory. So how can we receive, receive our products and then deliver them to our customers. We will also uh, have uh, a look uh, at multi-warehouse management. As you know, Odoo, in Odoo you can manage several warehouses, okay? And that's what be uh, the setup today. And uh, I will show you also a few of new features of version 12, uh, which has been issued in October this year. Uh, especially it's uh, about advanced routes, which you can configure it nowadays in one click. And at, the, at last but not least, we will discuss also about third party shippers integrations that Odoo already has. So let me just now quickly turn here to the our demonstration. So here, as you know, uh, it's um, it's a main menu in Odoo with all the applications that you can see. Um, the main one we'll focus on today is inventory. And uh, as from here, I'd like to show you directly uh, how our inventory looks like. Okay. So basically, uh, you can see that I set up a multi-warehouse today. We have our main warehouse with receipts, internal transfer and delivery orders. And then we have our store one and store two uh, configured with different routes. Okay. 
Furthermore, uh, if we have a look at different operations here, um, let me just have, uh, I'll present you also a warehouse dashboard. So this is a new feature in, uh, that we have in version 12 that before you also had this, um, all the reporting in Odoo, but basically now it's possible to have a well-organized dashboard with uh, all the needed information like here, okay? And then you can easily have a look at different things. For instance, if I'd like to see my delivery cycle time with some more information, I adjust it here and it's uh, in this uh, report, it shows me, okay, mostly delivery time uh, in, in general is one day. Okay, so then there are some few other features uh, here. As you understand, I only configured this database in few days. We don't have much information, but in general, you can see that when we worked, uh, if we go day by day on the 5th of February, for instance, uh, we did all the delivery orders within one day, okay? On the 6th of February, the same day, on the 7th as well, the same day. So this way you can have a complete uh, overlook how fast you are with delivering orders and things like this. And then just I'll go again to my uh, reporting system here. Uh, this is a nice report you can use in order you can apply different measures okay and if i want to see for instance uh, to check my product quantity and uh, i would like to ap apply this for all of my products this way i can see different information regarding my products uh, quantity of them and so on okay that's in general how the dashboard of a warehouse looks like then uh, this uh, new feature as well of time ranges that you can uh, apply any time ranges you'd like to and also have a comparison this way uh, how your inventory worked maybe last month and so on. So if you have any questions regarding the dashboard don't hesitate to contact me as Shatei said on my email. So now uh, we will concentrate more on the receipts and here uh, I will match it together sometimes also with a few delivery orders. Uh, as in first one, for instance, um, we will uh, use the rule of make to order, okay? In general, in Odoo, so here inventory is related to our purchase orders, in Odoo there are three ways uh, how you can purchase your order uh, or orders. So it can be make to order, okay? That's what I configured for one of our products. So here you can have a look at the products I prepared for us for today. And if we look more uh, to our strawberry tea, for instance, here in my uh, inventory app, I said that I'd like the routes I chose. I'm going to buy uh, my product and I'd like to work and make to order. Meaning that in general, uh, for instance, for this product, I don't have, uh, I don't want to have anything in my stock and I would only like to buy it once there is a need from a customer. Okay, once there is a sales order, which is, has been confirmed. Another way of, um, of the way to manage your purchase orders is through reordering rules, okay? When we introduce a certain number, minimum and maximum uh, number of products we'd like to have. This one I'll also show you later with another example. Or the third way is the manual one, when you just create a purchase order at, at one vendor. So let's have a look very quickly at all three of them, okay? So for the first one, uh, I'll quickly I'll quickly make a sales order. So imagine now we have one client, okay, one customer. Uh, I configured a few of them. So I'll take Coffee Circle for instance, and he is going to buy our strawberry tea. So Fairy Trail strawberry tea. Uh, let's say he he wants to order like quantity of ten pieces, okay, ten boxes. And um, of course you can choose validity and things like this, but it's not about this today. So I quickly go, I created a sales order and I have to confirm it. So what happens in Odoo? It generates me a delivery order. Um, I can also have a look at my delivery here in inventory. Uh, I, I see here in my delivery order in main warehouse, there is one waiting and one late. Just for you to show the idea. It's basically that uh, here we are working that we have to deliver 10 quantities of strawberry tea, okay? 
but if I check my availability, the system shows that I have nothing reserved and it also shows me that it's waiting for another operation. That's the idea of using reordering rules. Basically uh, here, uh, sorry, it's make of make to order. Basically, basically here we have our, uh, our uh, sales number 13, okay, and for our supply house we have our strawberry tea uh, purchase order which has been generated automatically in Odoo. It's a draft purchase order and in order, okay, we can send it by mail to our supplier or we can confirm our order directly if we are sure about the prices for it. So here I confirmed uh, my purchase order and the next step is to uh, receive the goods. I can receive my goods without going to inventory. As you can see, I'm still in purchase uh, module. I can already click here or, or here on the car to receive my goods. Okay. Or if I don't, if I still some days pass by and I'd like to go to my inventory, I can have a look. The I can find the same document here in my receipts. So I see here that from my partner supply house, so from my supplier. I'm going to receive uh, 10 boxes of strawberry tea, okay? I validate it directly. Odoo automatically applies the, uh, the number uh, which was in initial demand. If it's not the case, you can do it manually and apply the number you literally received. And now we have the 10 quantities in stock in order to do the second step, the delivery order, okay? Um, I again go to my inventory and you see now we have one delivery order which is ready to process. I click on here and uh, I show you directly how we can do a delivery order based from sales. Okay, I validate my delivery order and the 10, 10, 10 boxes of tea uh, went to my customer. Okay. If I need to print a document which accompanies uh, my delivery order, so picking operations or delivery slip, I can easily uh, do it here. Uh, it will generate, generate my PDF. Let me just, for instance, do the picking operations, and which I can have a look here with our logo, with our company details, customer address, and uh, barcode as well, if you, if you use uh, the barcode. this okay you can use if yeah okay sorry for this uh, small inconvenience okay so basically now uh, we did the we did the delivery order okay and let's go to the next step and we do reordering rules so what does really uh, reordering rules mean so for instance here uh, if I go to my products and I choose my uh, Dolce Gusto uh, coffee, I introduce reordering rules. So minimum quantity I want to have in my stock is 50 and the maximum quantity I want to have in my stock is 100. Uh, when I run the schedule for the first time, it will trigger my reordering rules. And then by uh, in my request for quotation, I can find a new one. Okay. For instance, in this case, for our Dolce Gusto, with the maximum quantity. So, um, if I know already the price and the quantity, I can confirm the order directly and I can receive my products. So, this way we go faster. I don't go to Inventor app, as you can see, it's all integrated. And I just receive my uh, 100 uh, boxes of Dolce Gusto coffee here. Okay. So, um, that's the, re the reordering rule. The idea is to have your stock at uh, maximum level and, min and minimum level. So you do not exceed actually the maximum level of your product in stock, but you never decrease the minimum level because once you decrease it, the system automatically creates you a draft purchase order at your cost at your supplier. Okay, and the and the for for the third one for purchase, but which we do manually. It's just I'm in purchase order. I create request for a, for instance, for a purchase order. I choose my partner. Let's choose distribution international, and then I choose my product here. Um, for instance, Gran Maestro Italiano. I choose the quantity I'd like to receive. Okay, Meta, let's receive twenty kilo of uh, coffee. And I confirm the order automatically, which generates me a receipt, which I can see again in my inventory app. As you can see here, so we have one receipt of our coffee. And I 
confirm, validate, as I said. So you, if you want to an answer, um, so if you want to do it manually, you click on edit and you edit it manually. If not, you validate directly the amount. Okay. Uh, so now we discuss the purchase orders and the ways the automatic way or manual way to do them in Odoo as well as we are picture as we've done with you few delivery orders okay uh, let us go more into depth about maybe a uh, multi warehouse management okay so basically in order in Odoo you can manage a uh, multi warehouse uh, when you go to settings in your inventory app you can configure that uh, so basically you choose multi, multi warehouse and for instance if you need special uh, routes and things like this you can also configure it all of it here okay once you once we have it uh, you create your warehouses as I said I created three of them as you could already see and the way I configured them uh, is basically uh, in our main warehouse it's just a simple receiving of goods and then delivering of them in one step but uh, furthermore um, i'll show you some uh, advanced routes as well a bit later today which i configured for my, our second and third uh, store or for second for first and second store okay uh, so now uh, we will try to do with you what happens sometimes is uh, of internal transfer okay so let's see let's say we are in our main warehouse okay i choose i click on internal transfer and i mainly manually would like to uh, tr transfer for instance one of my products okay from my main warehouse to my uh, store one for instance i will search more if i'm not sure which one to choose and um, let's say i will go and to stock to for instance store one stock okay so and we will choose one product in this way. Um, okay, Lavazza coffee. We will, for instance, transfer I don't know uh, ten kilo of Lavazza coffee from one internal location to another internal location. Uh, this we save it. That we mark it as to do because sometimes of course you understand it's not uh, directly that we do the transfer but we prepare our transfers and then when it's convenient uh, we physically uh, transfer the goods uh, we can see here that the amount reserved is enough in our main war warehouse of the Lavazza coffee so now we can validate it and once I validate it meaning that now my coffee has been moved from my main warehouse to my stock store one okay uh, you can do internal transfers for the same warehouse you can do internal transfers between your warehouse one and warehouse two furthermore uh, just for you to have a quick idea you can uh, have your inventory report okay just for us to have an idea uh, of how many products we have and we can as well group them by location uh, so as you can see here for for us in our sto uh, store one we have these products and this quant quantity of them in our uh, for instance in our main stock which is uh, we, we cover most of our products we have all of those products so it's all of that you can easily have a look at and if you'd like to also have your inventory elevation at the current uh, for instance currently to see the value of your uh, products in stock you can uh, easily do that as well uh, thanks to our report system uh, going more uh, so let's have sometimes it happens that for inventory you need to do an adjustment okay it can be uh, for uh, for inventory adjustments a yearly one it can be uh, that you know this you, you start something and uh, at certain point you would like to check your literally uh, how much you on stock you have this quantity and the real quantity okay and the idea here is that you do a draft so you do it for one product or for a family of for a few products and then you say uh, you start it 
and for instance you say the theoretical quantity is 120 but in reality i have 100 of this t okay it's not 120 anymore i save it and then i validate my inventory it immediately applies me that okay for this green lemon tea i have now real quantity of 100 boxes so for instance 100 kilos okay and uh for instance for uh, incoming receipts okay what can be done uh, just for you to know as i showed you before uh, through uh, sales order if you have if you manage your sales in odoo it would directly uh, generate you uh, a receipt uh, here if you do not have sales for instance in odoo and you still would like to manage your inventory you can of course always do manually a receipt of one good for instance, uh, let's let's just create one one uh, receipt, and we will, for instance, from one of our partners, Distribution International. I will uh, receive a few products. Okay, a look, Grand Maestro Italiano, and I will receive I don't know five kilos of uh, coffee, this type of coffee. Okay, I mark it as to do. And once I receive the goods and stuff, and uh, or you configure them, uh, I mean, if you uh, uh, if you go to main settings, you can also have the barcode uh, configure all of uh, barcodes for your products. So then you directly have an access uh, to the page with all of your products where you can easily uh, insert the barcodes. Okay, and once you do that, we have a free app. Uh, which is barcode it's actually related to the inventory so you do not buy in this case two apps but you only uh, go for inventory barcode comes with it and uh, the ideas of it that you use your barcode scanner or your even your mobile phone uh, which you activate the barcode scanner of Odoo on on which you activate and then you scan your goods and the operations okay if it's an internal transfer if it's uh, you receive your good if you deliver your goods Okay, uh, let us go now to the advanced routes. Uh, routes. I will show to you two of them today. Uh, so the idea here is um, to see that basically in version 12, we can now easily configure uh, our routes, uh, complete, uh, complicate, more complicated ones, in just in one click. So as I said, for my store one and store two, I did something a bit more special. So let me uh, quickly show you that. So, as I said, the, the main warehouse was quite uh, just one step, okay? If we have a look at our store one, basically here what I said, for our incoming shipments, just with one click, I will first receive my goods, then I will do a quality control, and then I will uh, put it in a location, okay, from where actually they can be shipped then to a customer, okay? And that's for my store or two i did another configuration in this case the re uh, receiving of goods will be simple in one step but when we are going to deliver to our customer we are going to do uh, packaging of goods sending goods in the output and then in third step uh, deliver to our customer so let me show you a few flows uh, on this part okay uh, so for the first one we will create with you directly a purchase order okay so we create a this order let's say we buy from our distribution international customer and uh, we will choose a coffee machine okay we will have Ely red coffee machine and doesn't matter let's put that we buy five five units of them the idea here uh, it's only in other information you can configure uh, your warehouse so uh, in our case we will receive it in store one okay and then once i save it and i confirm the order directly <coughs> okay now we are going to have the receipt here as you can see but um or what is better we go to inventory and i show it from for you for, for there so as you can see we have one receipt which has been created okay here to receive but also two uh, internal transfers waiting now i'll show you the idea so first the idea okay the coffee machine uh, 
arrive to our store one, okay, we open the first uh, file and we see that basically operation type is a receipt in, in store uh, one. The initial quantity was five. I validate it directly and I say, okay, it's true, I received five coffee machines. I then go back to my inventory and in my internal transfers, I have one to process. What does it mean here is basically that once we receive the goods, we directly from our input, we put, we, are, we, are, we would like to put them now in quality control. In order, uh, you see the quantity reserves is here, but quality control, we would first see, does it work correctly, our coffee machine, okay? So we, we test that and we apply it. So now it, for us, it works correctly. And the, and the third step to do, we come back to our inventory. We will, again, it's an internal transfer, we, but the operation is different. So basically now from quality control point, it move, it, we move it to our uh, stock point. So now we did our quality control, we validated, and these five coffee machines can be shipped to our customers when we sell them. Okay, this was the first advanced route I wanted to show you. And now we will do the second one uh, again in one click, which I configured for our second store. Basically, uh, we are going to uh, we are going to do as well. Uh, we are going to sell one product, okay? And then uh, our product we are going to sell is in make to order. So first there will be a purchase order generated. We will receive our goods, and then you'll see the way I'm going to pack. Uh, my goods, the, the goods and sell and send them to our customer. So here we will start with sales. I will create a quotation, okay, for any of our customers. Let's take coffee lovers and we will add our uh, strawberry tea, which I took already earlier. And let's say uh, I want, uh, my customer wants 10 boxes of the strawberry tea. I save it. And I conf and uh, just another small operation to do here in my other information. Okay, if the warehouse is not the main one, in our case is the store two. Okay, I change it to store two. So I save it, and as you can see, I can confirm my sales order directly, which uh, actually generates me three deliveries. Okay, so when we are going to deliver to our um, uh, to our partner coffee lovers, to our customer, uh, we would have to go through three steps and I will show you that in future. But as you can see here, there is another uh, like help for us hint that uh, basically we are waiting for another operation. And as I told you, our strawberry tea is in make to order, meaning that we'll first go through purchase order. Okay. And as you can see, Odoo is really straightforward because uh, not only, okay, you can see that it's a reference for a quotation and if you open it, uh, you can see that it's our strawberry tea and the vendor automatically uh, uh, set, set up, the quantity is there, but it also shows us that it's connected to our sales order no number 14, so you can always have a track of that. In this case, I would like to buy uh, the, t the 10 boxes of my tea. I confirm the purchase order and I have a simple receipt. Uh, the only thing here is that, just for you to see, it's directly, since my sales order was um, configured for store two, for my purchase order, it automatically took as well the store two. Okay? So now I will receive quickly my, uh, my tea in store two here in receipts. This route is quite simple. It's just you receive the, the goods. I validate the quantity and now I have the 10 boxes in stock so I can I can deliver them to my customer. The only thing here, since it's an advanced routing, you can see first we will have to do the pick. So I show you one by one, uh, meaning that from our main uh, warehouse, from our store to sorry stock, uh, the, the tea goes to our packing zone. Okay. So we validate it here and now if we go we have next step is to pack our goods okay so we process here as you can see 
from the packing zone. Here is basically when when we're gonna put it all together in one package. Uh, it will go into output zone. So imagine already 10 reserved and we, we did all the packaging, we validate it. And furthermore, the last step to do, of course, is to deliver it to our final uh, customer. As you can see, coffee lovers here, uh, the, the initial demand, the reserved quantity already packed normally, and we validated the delivery order here. Okay, uh, so that's for advanced uh, routes. Uh, as I showed you before, uh, in uh, let's say in warehouses here, you can see all of them. So if you go to your warehouse management, you can see all the advanced routes in one click that you can configure now in Odoo, which is new in, in version 12. And now, last but not least, I will tell you about third-party shipper integrations, okay? So, uh, what with which systems do we have the integration here? I'll show you just the list of providers, ship shipping connectors. As you can see, uh, we have U uh, U UPS, DHL, uh, B Post, FedEx, USPS, Easy Post. Um, you can uh, see which one is available. Uh, I mean, for each case is specific. So, if you'd like to use or do with any of them, uh, it's beforehand. It's better that you consult with us and uh, check directly if it's available or not in your specific for your country. Okay, it's better always to double check uh, this part. And I'll just show you a small uh, thing, uh, how we can basically work with it. I, I did some configuration. As you can understand, it's a test uh, database, so it's not a real shipment we're going to do. But I'll, I'll try to show you something that I managed to configure. We choose, for instance, uh, one of our... Um, one of our customer coffee lover and uh, coffee lovers and then doesn't matter we can choose validity we can choose payment terms and as well i will choose now the product for instance in this case i will sell ili machine um, so ili coffee machine okay and just just a quick okay I will sell this coffee machine and delivery method here. I will use UPS uh, BE, so Belgium. What it automatically, uh, since I configured for my coffee machine the vo uh, how big it is and how much the weight of it, I can get a rate, okay? In a, here it calculates me the rate. And as you can see, it's uh, 19 euros that I uh, should pay, 19 euros and 70 cents that I should pay for the shipment of it. If I'd like to add it to order to my customer, I can easily do it here, okay? Unfortunately, furthermore, I cannot show you the tracking. As I explained, it's basically it's a test environment. But the idea is once we proceed with the sales order and once it's in our inventory, under the, uh, under the in inventory, in inventory, you will have one line with a, so is with a number of tracking and you can easily easily use this number uh, uh, there will be a connection between ups and odoo in order to track your various you know your package uh, with this uh, thanks to this number so i guess more or less uh, that's all i wanted uh, what i wanted to show you today okay um Chateau, are there any questions? Thank you. Yes, there are a couple of questions. Um, I think we also have some of our you know, partners out there who are answering some questions as well, but oh, maybe okay. we can just get through all of them. So we have one question by Slagogle. would like to know if it's possible to choose a route for a sales order. For example, one sale will be delivered by DHL and another one by ourselves. So can we choose different routes for different exactly. sales orders? Uh, basically, as you can as what I did like here for our coffee lovers okay yeah. when i uh, delivery method was ups belgium uh, basically i i could okay do also free delivery charges or not to choose anything so what was configured was this by default there might be nothing and then if you are connected especially to several uh, shippers pro shipping providers then you can choose uh, one of them or not to choose anything Okay, thank you. Um, another one by Ahmed Adib who wants to know how to reserve a product 
track with cereal. Tell me how to reserve. Maybe it would be better if you want to read through the questions here. Um, how to reserve a product tracked with cereal. Okay, basically, maybe what you mean here is uh, serial number and lots, okay? Uh, so, batch, uh, how we track uh, in Odoo, it's possible. Just let me check if it's in this configuration. Uh, in Odoo, you can uh, say for that for your products, you would like to use lots and serial numbers, okay, in order to get a full traceability on them. Um, if you activate this function, basically, uh, let's just quickly do it. At the end, you, just a second, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, your screen was not active. Okay, there we go. Okay. So basically here, once we activate lots and serial numbers, okay, in our inventory configuration, we can go back to products. And for every and each of our products, we say, would we like to... Uh, let me just see here, here, traceability, to have tracking by unique serial number, by lots or no tracking. By doing that, at the end, if, it's, uh, if we use a tracking by serial number, uh, for instance, or by lots, every, on every receipt of goods, you, you will have to introduce serial numbers. Otherwise, the system will not uh, permit you to receive your goods because it will, show, it will give you a block. Once you introduce all the serial numbers or lots numbers to your products, you will then receive them. Okay. Okay. Actually, I should just keep this one so that it's easier for you to... Oh, no. Easier okay. this way. Okay. Uh, we have a question by The Flash. Uh, would like to know when during internal transfer if you have other products defect okay how do you do the quality control of uh, defective products okay internal transfer okay basically i mean you can set up different probably you can set up different routes if you'd like to have uh, also for your internal transfer some quality control okay if on every um, so what I showed you was uh, in one click advanced configuration what's possible as well is thanks to module quality to have any quality check at any time you know in your during your warehouse processes so uh, eventually I guess you could configure it the way that for for every one of your let's say from your movements from one place to another there would be an additional step of the quality control okay uh thank if something you. is not clear don't hesitate to come back to me by email so yeah. we will discuss in more details yeah. maybe your specific question or your specific the way you are functioning because of course i understand it's everyone's inventory is not the same yes, yeah for exactly. sure um okay we have time for just a few more questions so if you have some questions please put them now uh we run by ali jafar um if you configure a product with make to order and manufacturing okay a manufacturing order and delivery order will be created and we reserve a quantity newly transferred to our warehouse okay so there's a follow-up okay reserve the required product okay so if there's a can you reserve a product it already has a manufacturing order. That's the question. Basically, here we I didn't configure manufacturing module with it, but basically it's possible to have make if you have your product which you're gonna manufacture and you put it in make to order, okay. And for uh, f because of course your final product will be made up of uh, of uh, components. If your components you buy them and they are also in make to order this idea is you don't want to keep anything in your stock you don't have want to keep anything in your production only for instance once we have a sales order for final product only then you would first like to buy your components and then produce the final product this is one way of working the other way you say okay for my components, for instance, I still would like to keep them in stock mm -hmm. to have, um, I don't know, maybe with reordering rules to have a minimum and a maximum quantity, a number mm -hmm. of them. But for my for my the, for a production line, I don't want to produce until we really sell the product. Mm -hmm. In that case, once you the sales order passed, it gen generates automatically a manufacturing order to do, but you will have your components available in stock and uh, nothing will stop you from producing directly. Okay, 
I hope I answered your questions. If um, if it's not clear, please come back to me. <laughs> Um, okay, and we have another question by Wilson Kifua. I would like to know an inventory adjustment. Uh, backdating the stock forces the inventory dates to be in the past. So, how do you address the issue of negative reconciliation? Not quite sure if I understand that. Uh, yeah, it's a bit uh, not clear for me either. Uh, maybe, Wilson, if you could clarify, ex clarify yes. me via an email the question yeah. more correctly. So, uh, explaining maybe with an example of your process mm -hmm. what you'd like to have. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I will check it out for you or I will... Uh, I can also consult somebody, other colleagues, yeah. other colleagues uh, mm -hmm. from technical department if it's needed, you know, if it's something more advanced uh, on configuration. Okay, uh, we have a last couple of questions and then unfortunately we will have to stop because we're a bit short of time here. Um, we have one by Amar Gazi who would like to know if you have different inventory and want to know the valuation for a product at each location, is it possible and how? Okay, so basically on the valuation, as I showed you before, you can do the inventory valuation. Okay, let's just check together. Here you have the general inventory evaluation. Let me just see. Um, I suppose the standard, let me issue. Okay, maybe not directly. We cannot group them by location. Okay. It's equal to uh, just try something store location is set. Yeah. But location is set, it will uh, all of them are, uh, are set okay. in the location. Uh, so basically, if there is no really groupment directly by location, okay. Uh, so it's more a uh, total uh, inventory valuation, okay. Um, I'm not sure we have. Also, when it's about valuation, uh, to divide that by internal locations okay. or by by, loca by multiple locations. But the, if not, valuation report is here, and uh, your inventory report to see which pieces are in which location. That of course you can uh, see with your notebook. Okay, uh, we have one other question by Dominic K. Who wants to know if it's for United Kingdom on accounting part. Of course, here we didn't discuss on an uh, accounting, mm -hmm. but uh, all of for, for in order to manage your uh, uh, first in or first out FIFO or LIFO, you can do you can introduce it for your products. Okay, basically that's possible. Okay, so that's great. And last question by the Flash. I love your username, by the way. It's excellent. How can I nicely save a product which also needs to list its internal components like router, Cisco routers, or switches? Sorry. To save a product, which yes. needs it's. I think it's more MRP than like a bomb. You have the ah, internal. Okay. Okay. List. So yeah. So basically, you would have to use MRP module on that, uh, because it's a production then, and uh, nicely you have your final product which you will send to your customers, but it will be con uh, con constructed of bill of materials with its components in it yeah so you should use any mrp MRP, MRP plus inventory it. yeah yes okay well i think that's all that we have for today uh thank you very much you guys for your questions and your participation you. if you like on this presentation please feel free to like share and comment you know you know the usual as it's done if you'd like to look at other webinars, we do one every week. Um, feel free to subscribe to our channel or go to our events page, uru.com backslash event. Um, and that's it. I'm going to put up Anna's email address here so you can email her if you have any more specific questions relating to your business needs. You can also contact your, if you have a business advisor or account manager, it'd be happy to help you out as well. Um, that's all that we have for today. Thanks again, Anna. This Thank was really you. nice. Uh, and you. I love the example with the tea and the coffee. Very relevant right now. So um, I hope you guys join us next time and uh, see you soon. Goodbye. Bye.